Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to our God who is our only source. From him all blessings flow. Hallelujah. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell. We want to dwell. so that he can excite us. We appear before him because his intention is to build us. His intention is to equip us. Listen to me. The plan of God for you as an individual and as a family is so that you can be complete. Because in the realm of the spirit, he has completed you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says you. And when the Bible says you, it's not just talking about you, it's also talking about me. So that I don't just point to you and say you think it's, you are the only one that is complete. I'm not complete. No. He said ye are complete in he. Ye are what? Who is the head of all principality and, and power. So every time you appear before God, his purpose is to complete you, to build you. He wants to transfer life into you. He wants to transfer light into you. He wants to transfer ability. He wants to go into your spirit because your spirit is complete. Your spirit is like Jesus. He wants to unlock the limitless capabilities and potentials and possibilities of your recreated humans. And one way he does it by sending his word. Mm. God wants to give us tools God wants to give us equipment that we can use in living this life. That's why I get worried if I see people in church with nothing to write with, I get worried. Not for me, not because I want them to write what I'm saying. I get worried for them. Because you need something to capture spirits. Beyond what I'm saying, right? I might, I might just say, there's an overflow. And immediately what you will be hearing is that there's an overflow in my life in this era. And you need to capture the spirit of it. Because revelation is your greatest anchor in the day of adversity. 
your revelation, your understanding. It's your greatest anchor. It's your biggest strength. It's your biggest advantage in the day of adversity. The day of adversity comes for everybody. Jesus was in a boat and adversity came. The wind came. The, 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 the storm came. But one thing is that he had revelation. One day Jesus was fasting and praying. Remember he was fasting. Remember he was praying. Guess who came to visit him? The devil himself. Can you imagine? After 40 days. Not at the beginning, oh, when he had finished. You know, you will think that you have had the victory, but guess what? He carried revelation. Most times for believers, once a small challenge comes, they think challenge is special to them. No, challenges are special to everybody breathing. The only people that don't have challenge are the ones that are dead. Once you are dead, challenges end. But as long as you wake up and you yawn in the morning, oh, say, I thank God for today. Welcome to challenges. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. He said, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Listen to me. When you are facing challenges, it's nothing new. So I say, I'm facing challenges. Who will tell me? Who will they do me? Who will they pursue me? Who is from my village? And then immediately you go somewhere and they look for something tell, to tell you. Is any man afflicted? Let him. That means they know affliction is going to come. Then they now give you the solution. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because challenges are natural to this life. But the believer will live above them. That is why when you come to church, like what you are giving is equipment. So that when they come, Goliath came. He was handled because everybody that was there had no revelation. They saw him as a giant. Then somebody came and said, mm -mm, he might be a giant, but he's uncircumcised. Yes. That a circumcised boy is bigger, better and stronger than an uncircumcised giant. A circumcised boy, blood has been shed for him. He has a covenant. He has a name. He has privileges in the realm of the spirit. But an uncircumcised giant is just an empty drum making noise. Revelation is your biggest anchor in the day of adversity. The disciples had no revelation. So they met a blind man. Ah, immediately, they turn to Nigeria. They turn to Jesus. Papa, Papa, prophet, go deeper. Who sinned that this man was born blind? Tell us what was buried in his village that he was born blind. What was buried in her village that she's yet to be married? What was buried? What happened that her business is shrinking? What happened that he didn't have a job? Guess what Jesus told them? You know, because they were very wicked. They said, is it this man that sinned or his father? Because if Jesus said the man did not sin, they would say then it must be his father. That means ancestral sin. I told you those guys are Nigerians. But, get, <laughs> but Jesus located them. He said, all these Nigerians, I deal with you today. You know what he said to them? Neither did this man sin. Neither did his father sin. He said, but right now, this is a challenge. And when a challenge comes, the glory of God is going to be made what? Manifest. Ah, yeah. Listen to me. That is why I say, whatsoever challenge is in your life tonight, you are going to see glory. Amen. Not by power, not by might, but you are going to see glory. Amen. You will encounter glory. Amen. And tonight, let your lips not be too heavy for an amen. amen. You will encounter glory. Amen. See, listen, the power of God will approach you from where you are now and move you into where you ought to be. Amen. You will enter the plan of God. Amen. You will fulfill purpose. Amen. The intention of God will be manifested in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. anything the enemy has done, it will be reversed. Amen. Whatsoever Satan has planted, we uproot them tonight. Amen. Whatsoever you have ever lost that ought to be in your life, we ship them in by prophecy. Amen. We ship them in by prophecy. Amen. If you have lost time in life, we restore time to you. Amen. I say we restore time. Amen. 
you have ever lost money, we restore money, we restore relationship, we restore your status, we restore your status, we restore your goods, we restore your asset, we restore your asset, we restore your glory, we restore your crown, we restore your place, let your amen ring out. Tonight is that night, because this is Mount Zion, and on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And the sons of Jacob, they will possess their possession. Yes. And everything that belongs to us. Listen to me. We are not taking 50%. We are not taking 60. We are not taking 80. We are not taking 99.5. 100 in my life. 100 in your life. Over and above. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's who our God is. Anoints my head with oil. My cup does not get filled. It doesn't get filled. Runs over. Mm. Ephesians 3.20 It says, and God, and God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. That means they take everything. They say, give us your list. So you wrote the list. You wrote. You use one year to write list. When God looked at it, He said, "We exceed it." He said, "I will not only exceed it. I will do abundantly." You have just been thinking, eh, "I will get to the US. I will get to the US." God is saying, "I will take you to UK, US, Canada, Saudi Arabia. Everywhere you cover the earth." Lord, I'm tired of squatting. Lord, I'm tired of squatting. Lord, I, I, want to, I want to be able to pay my own rent. While you are looking at paying rent, God is saying, I'll give you an estate. Yes, I'm not exciting you. You are saying, oh God, give me a job. Give me a job. He said, no. He, there will come a time. They will count your employees. The least employees you have attended will be 5,000. Yes. Payroll. You know why? Because he said he's able to do exceeding abo abundantly above all which you ask if you just cross your mind. Huh? This I just wish say I get the latest car. I just wish say I don't marry. I just wish, see, it, it just passes your mind. You see yourself playing with your son, your daughter. You are never yet married. He said, God is saying, all, 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 I will do exceeding, yes, abundantly, above all. Welcome to a new day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If you can take it. Mm. I said, welcome to a new day. Yeah. The you that will go out after we shared the grace is different from the you that came in. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying your complexion will change. I'm not saying the color of your shirt will change. I'm saying you will contact what eyes cannot see that will make sure your evidence changes outside. I'm excited excited for the Lord our God not our pastor mm -mm. not our prophet mm -mm. not our bishop the Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty Haba. if in the Lord our God if he's mighty and because he's mighty I hope you know that this year we're not close there will be mighty manifestations in your life. Say, I believe, therefore I receive. Spirits are subject to the name. We are looking at the powerful name of Jesus and we said some of the benefits of the name. We said the name offers salvation for there is no name under heaven given to men whereby we can be saved other than the name of Jesus. That is Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Romans 10 13 says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Number two, we said the name of Jesus 
is the key to powerful praying, to effective praying. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8, the Bible says, Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. He said, For everyone that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. And to everyone that knocketh, the door shall be opened. So, what is the secret to asking? He said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. The name of Jesus is the key to power. Don't pray and say, In the name of God. There is no, if you check your Bible, there is no place that it was recommended. Some of you, because you are in your office, you don't read, you say, in God's name we pray. Mm. That prayer is a speech. You, you just turn that prayer into a political speech. You are not different from those who stand in the UN and make a speech. He said, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. So you must ask the Father but in the name of Jesus. So number three, which we started looking at last week, is that spirits are subject to the name. Quickly, Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. And these signs, I want you to again to take note of the phrase, in my name. And these signs shall follow them that what? In my name shall they do what? Did you see that? If you are a believer, a true believer, or you are born again, wave your right hand. Okay? Some people's hand is down. No problem at all. After service, you can meet Pastor Jonas so that you give your life to Christ. Right now, as I'm teaching, I can't stop. He said, these signs, those people that wave their hands, right? These signs shall follow them. The first sign is that when they say, in the name of Jesus, no matter the devil, they can cast him out. They can cast him out of their body. They can cast him out from their business, from their family, their children, their husband, their marriage. They can, even male or female, they don't have, need to have tied to. Once you are a believer, the name is your own. Say the name is mine. Matthew 10, 8. Matthew 10, 8. Matthew 10, 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Ah, this one is sweet too. Cast out devils. So why are you afraid of devils? Say, I dreamt. When you wake up, cast them out. Your dad calls you. Your mother calls you. They say something is running the roof. Something is appearing to people. Do what? Cast them out. I told you the story of the great man of God, Lester Sumrall. He was a man leader. And there's this girl in the prison. They had to chain her in the prison because she was possessed with devils. And you'll be watching her like this. You'll be seeing teeth on her body. Somebody biting her. Life like this, you'll be seeing it on her body. So he went, he cast out that devil from the lady, and the whole city came to see Lesa Sombra, hailed him, and he went back to the room where he was sleeping. And as he was sleeping in the night, wind just blew and opened his window. The wind blew into his room, and the wind shook his bed from the, from the side and moved it to the middle of the room. And the wind went out. <laughs> if it was you, what would you do? <laughs> Pastor Abu, Pastor Abu, Pastor Abu. Or you shout, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So he was angry. He said he will not move that bed. So he said, in the name of Jesus, come back. Move my bed back to its original location. And guess what? That devil came back, shook the bed back to its original Then he sent it back. Someone shout glory. Glory! 
Say, I have the name. I have the name. Say, every negative power. Bows in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10, 17, I think, to 20. Please listen to what he said. So, and the 70 returned again with what? Joy. Carry joy. Amen. No depression in this place. Amen. You say, Pastor, is it that depression does not exist? It exists. It exists. But it's a devil. It's a devil. Hmm. I was telling Pastor Enka, I said, depression exists. It's a sickness. It exists. I said, it, it was imported. It's not original from Nigeria. Hmm. It was imported. Nigerians, that everything is a joke. You do presidential election, it's a joke. You do strike, it's a joke. You increase fuel that people want to be crying, it's a joke. You increase the price of beans, it's a joke. When people even die, you know, on the Naira redesign, we still turn it to a joke. So, at, at what point did you become? I had one comedian making people laugh. He said, when his mom wants to go out, she would call all of them and kneel down. Then she would flog them. They would start crying and say, Mama, what did you do? She said, nothing. Then why are you beating us? She said, because when I know when I go out, you people will do something. <laughs> so this beating is a credit to your account. So at what point? I was in London and so a taxi driver carried me. Real life story. So as we were driving, so he saw a white man. Okay, it was in Manchester. So he saw a white man talking to himself. So he looked at me and laughed. So he said he's depressed. <laughs> so he said he's depressed. So I said, yeah. Yes, he said they're all depressed. And I said, what about you? He said, me? I don't have time to be depressed. <laughs> He said, he said, I'm trying to make money. I came to this country to make money. So how can I be depressed? <laughs> so you can see depression is a choice. And if there be anybody here who is depressed, we locate that demon. We bind you and we cast you out. And the 70 re returned again with joy. Say, Lord, even the devils. All kinds. It's a capital letter. Devil. That means they met devil of sickness, devil of stagnancy, devils of prayerlessness, devils of laziness, compulsive laziness, devils of greed, fornication, and all kinds of devils. Devils of cancer, fibroid. They met them and they said, Those devils. They were shocked. They came back bouncing. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Because it was a cheap thing. Verse 18. And he said unto them, You are seen there with... He said, Me, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. When he was cast out of heaven. He said, I was there. Just beheld him. Pop! We cast him out. They've been cast... <laughs> 19. He, said, he now told them again. He said, Behold, I give you power to do what? And what? And over... Three of the powers. Shaka para katoliaba. Over what? All the power, all the authority of what? The enemy. They now stop and say nothing. Everyone shout nothing. nothing. Come on, shout nothing. nothing. Shout nothing. nothing. Some people are afraid. When I was growing up as a Christian, we were singing pray one song. It's not a praise and worship song because it's not every song that is praise. It's not every song that say Satan don't fall for God. We used to sing it, but you know they say it's praise. It's not praise. What is praising God inside that one now? It's not praise. Don't get it twisted. Some songs are songs of declaration. Some songs are songs of confession. Some songs are songs of encouragement. Praise is directed to God. Worship is directed to God. There are songs directed to us. If you begin to sing, I know that I can make it. I know that. Eh? That one is not worship now. And it's not praise. But if you say, 
Be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord. <laughs> so we now sing that song. Satan, don't fall for God. Match up. One guy just stood like this. So I asked him, I said, What happened? He said, If I match him now, if I go home, he no go match me. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say nothing. nothing. Mm. See, listen, when Jesus said this, he didn't say it in vain. Say, believe it, receive it. Carry on with all your chest. It's not when you are raking on this, say, with all my chest, I will chop this about. This is what you should take with all your chest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will tell them like this, anywhere, that see as I did like this, nothing shall by any means, what? Hurt me. Nothing. I will tread on them. Yes, hear me, please. Oh, hear me. You will not die before your time. Amen. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. Nothing. Verse 20. He now said, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. They, they, they are your servant. The word subject means to be a servant. Someone you can ask, go, they go. Come, they come. Sit there, they sit there. So that means spirits are what? Subjects. Glory be to God. Alright, having laid that foundation, if you study your Bible very well, you will observe in the Bible, the Bible talks to us about the existence, that there are things that exist that our eyes can see. You can see me, right? If you can't see me very well, you need glasses. Or you take healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I can see you. You can see me. You can see the pulpit. These are things that what? Exist. You can see your husband or your wife or your friend or your house. These are things that exist in the physical. These are physical things. But also there are things that exist. That cannot be seen. Personalities that cannot be seen. There are beings that cannot be seen. Shh. Have you heard that before? That hands cannot touch. Eyes cannot see. But guess what? They exist. 2 Corinthians 4, 18, quickly. Let me try just... Look at what he said. Why we look not... At what? At the things or the beings which are what? But at the things which are? So you can see two categories of things. The things that can be seen and the things that cannot be? The beings that can be seen. The beings, the personalities that cannot be? He said for the things which are seen are what? But the things which are not seen are what? Yes, that means they are spirits. Um, Colossians chapter 1, 16. Colossians 1, 16. We want to establish the fact that there are certain beings that exist, but we can't see them with the physical eyes. That is the point I am establishing now. Say with me, there are beings, there are things that eyes cannot see, but they are real. Is that clear? Let's say it one more time because I want you to get it. That's the point I'm establishing. Tell me that there are persons. There are persons. Yes, there are, there are things. There are beings, there are beings. that exist are in another world that eyes are. cannot see, are. hands are. cannot touch. Are. Okay, Colossians 1.16. Follow me carefully. For by him were all things what? Let me hear you. For by him were all things what? Created. That are where? And where? So some things are where? In heaven. Some things are where? Okay. Now take a look at the next category. Some of them are what? Visible. When we say something is visible, what do we mean? You can see them with the eyes. Then he now said there are others that are what? 
can you see that when we say that there are things that exist that our eyes cannot see, we are right? Yes, because scriptures have said it. And the scriptures cannot be what? He now said, whether they be what? Thrones. Or dominions. Or or all things were what? By him and for him. Ephesians 6 12. We are establishing the fact that there are things, beings, personalities that, that exist, but our eyes cannot see them. Are you still with me? Thank you. If you are ready, we can go ahead. Are you ready? The way it's raining like this, that means we can be here till 12 midnight. Ephesians 6 12. All right. Please follow carefully. Very powerful thing we are doing tonight. Follow carefully. He said, For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. When they talk about flesh and blood, he's talking about humans. He's talking about what our eyes can see, right? Yes, sir. He said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against what? Uh huh. Against. Against. Against, against spiritual. Another translation says against wicked spirits. Give me this same verse in the good news. GNT. Do you have GNT? You don't have GNT. What do you have? I told you, I used to see GNT now. Okay. We'll take this. For we are not fighting against what? Can you see that? Human beings can be seen. For we are not fighting against human beings. But against what? Wicked spiritual forces. We are? The rulers. So some of them are what? Rulers. The, and some others are what? Authorities. And cosmic powers of this dark. My God. Give me the NLT. Is it, clear, is it becoming very clear to you that there are things that eyes cannot see? There are beings eyes cannot see. There are persons that eyes cannot see. What qualifies something to be a person? Not a human, no, not human. A, 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 a person, a personality. It's mind, will, emotion. The ability to take decisions. NLT. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the come on guys of the what? against mighty powers in this and against what? don't be afraid to say evil spirit there's nothing they can do to you now you have the, say I have the name because as we are reading when we just go to evil spirit some people will say against powers against evil spirit you have the name and the name is not a means of identification it's an office with all the powers the privileges the resources the authority backing one of the team backing that office the bible calls them an innumerable company of angels how many what's the size of the nigerian army maybe 400,000 people What's the size of the American army? I don't know. Let's guess. Let's say 2 million. You can count. Even if you say 10 million, you can count. If you say 1 billion, you can count. But when it comes to angels at the disposal, the Bible says innumerable. There was one time, one, only one angel, he killed 70,000 people. One. There was one time, uh, um, Joshua said he saw an, uh, an angel standing with a sword drawn between the heaven and the earth and he said who is on the lost side but guess how many of them they are there are innumerable company some of them are angels that bring good news hail mary thou art highly favored the lord is with you they bring blessing some ascend some descend the angels of the lord they encamp around the righteous and they deliver them 
are angels, not ministry spirit, sent forth to minister to them that be heirs of salvation. Hebrews 1 14. Glory. So let's take it again. For we are not fighting against what? Flesh and blood enemies, but against what? Evil rulers and authorities of the what? Against mighty powers in this dark world. Against what? So now we have established that there are things, beings, persons that exist, but our eyes cannot see them in the realm of the spirit. Right, now listen. It has also been established from scripture that this realm, that, listen carefully, that our eyes cannot see usually has an influence on this realm that our eyes can see. The Holy Ghost influences people. Acts 10 44. While Peter yet spake this word, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Jesus said that, 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 that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has what? Anointed me. So the Holy Ghost falls on people. Mary was sitting down, and an angel appeared to her. Peter was in prison. An angel came and held him by the hand and led him out. So, the realm of the spirit affects the realm of the physical. Scriptures have shown us that the unseen realm and activities of spirits, activities of spiritual forces and spirit beings have significant influence and effect on the physical and the seen realm. It is something you must believe. That the spirit realm has impact on the physical realm. Why will somebody look at another person and say something to that person and the person's life will progress, prosper, break through? In another instant, why will somebody say something to somebody and the person's life will start going down, drying up? The spirit realm has effects on the natural realm. Why will somebody dream and somebody will hold their throat in the dream? The person wakes up and the person can't talk again. The spirit realm has effect on the physical realm. If you are writing, write this down. Good or bad, the effect of spirit beings on the natural or the physical realm, the effect of spirit beings on the natural or the physical realm is to alter the normal course of nature. Is to alter the normal course of nature. Please look up. If the normal course of nature is that after one year, you take one step. After another one year, you take one step of progress. If the realm of the spirit positively impacts your life, instead of one year, in three months, the step people take for two years, you take it in one month. Am I speaking? If the realm of the spirit is impacting negatively on that individual through wicked spirits, where the person ought to be by normal course of nature in one year, you will find that 10 years he has not entered it. The effect of spirit beings on the natural the physical realm is to alter the normal course of nature. 
they support to produce abnormal, superhuman, and supernatural results. They support to produce abnormal, superhuman, and supernatural results. When spirit supports you, you will cut through life like knife through butter and produce unusual results. When spirit supports you, you will cut through life like knife through butter and produce great results. Please, Exodus 31, quickly. Let me run through this quickly. My God. The way time is flying. Exodus 31, I'm reading from verse 1 to 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah, verse 3. I have filled him with what? The Spirit of God. In what? Can you see the realm of the Spirit impacting on a man? He's not the only man in that city. But now, a Spirit has rested upon him. It is now manifesting as what? Wisdom. Manifesting as what? Understanding. Manifesting as what? Knowledge. And in all manner of what? Workmanship. Verse 4. To devise cunning works. To work in gold at the highest level. To work in silver and in what? Brass. May the spirit of wisdom rest upon your life. May they rest upon your children. There will be no foolishness anywhere around you. I can't hear your amen. amen. There will be no foolishness in your life. Amen. You will not take foolish business decisions. Amen. None of your child will be foolish. Amen. Supernatural wisdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 5. And in cutting of stones. How can someone be cutting stones? But wisdom is there. To set them. To arrange them. And in carving of timber to work in all manner of what? Workmanship. Give it to me in the message from verse 1 to 5. God spoke to Moses. Verse 2. See what I have done. I have personally chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God. Giving him what? Listen to me. It's not all skill that you will learn. You can tap into the realm of the spirit and come out with an unusual skill. What is skill? Skill is the ability to solve problem. And hear me. You will be broke until you start solving problem. If you solve the problem of poor people, there is a limit to your finances. If the major problem of this world is being solved by you, hear me, the entire world will pay you. If the problem of Kubwa is solved by you, Kubwa will pay you. If the problem of Nigeria is solved by you, Nigeria will pay you. You must cry for skill. And it is a, if God gave it to him, he will give it to you. Amen. He's not a partial God. I have given him skill and what? Know how. One day, somebody's generator got spoiled. They did everything. Everything. The generator will not start. So they called a the man. And the man came. And this generator, they battled with it for like three weeks. And the man came, looked at it, looked at it. And in two minutes, he just tightened a screw. And he told them, pay me 200000 they say for you to just come and turn something. He said, yes. He said, coming here is 10,000 naira. The 190,000 is to know what to turn. Someone shout, know how. Know how. He said, I have given him know how and expertise in every kind of what? 
parties. Let them say that no matter the question they bring, no matter the earthly challenge, you are an expert. You will stop begging. Verse 4. Look at what he said. To create what? My God. To create what? Whether it's a building, whether it's clothes, to create. Listen to me. We, we, we just want to come and play church. Let's tap into the realm of the spirits. There was a man called R.G. Lotonu. He was the one that designed most of these big, big trucks, all of these caterpillars you are seeing. And he was a believer. He used to type 90%. He said most of the time when he sleeps, when he sleeps, he will see designs. Then he wake up and quickly draw them. Thomas, um, no, Napoleon Hill said he traveled with him. And the guy kept a pad by his side. And that the guy was sleeping. Then the guy started talking from his sleep. That is why you must be filled with the Spirit. All this one from your sleep. Leave me, leave me. <laughs> Someone shout out. Are becoming billionaires from their dream. Say, I saw myself in my primary school. Stop that dream. The guy had been trying and trying to get the particular design of a caterpillar. He was not able to get, and they were flying in the plane. He said, he just saw him from his sleep. Then, then he woke up with his eyes closed. Then he wrote, wrote the answer, wrote something, then went back to sleep. That's sleep. You, 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 you say you are tired, you sleep, you wake up, you are mortal because they have changed you around Kubwa. <laughs> say, I reject that. Say, creativity. Say, wisdom. Hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, He gives songs in the night. You can hear a beat in the night. Lyrics, poems, ideas, something you will design, the king will send for you. When spirits are acting on you. To create designs and work in gold, silver and bronze, verse 5. To cut and set what? Gemstones. That means when you walk, your work is set. The only thing I don't like to be said, I saw one, one, one day I'll bring the picture of one Amala. I said, we don't want that one. You know this thing they used to pipe icing. They used to pipe Amala. Now put it three like this. Now do the begiri. I said, it, not Amala. Not Amala. Design every other thing. Leave Amala as it is. That's how we want it to be. Don't modernize Amala. You know, I don't know if Jerry is in the house. I was, when I was still schooling in London, we were traveling. So there were a lot of people traveling. I said, what? They said they want to give somebody an award. Um, so we went to get crash that party. So they said it was a three-course meal. So we didn't eat from home. <laughs> Anytime you go abroad, they say three, just eat well, well. <laughs> they first brought one small bowl. They say soup. I taste them. I know like I'm a liver. They now brought a big plate with a big cover. When they open it, ha! They did not pass one spoon of something for the middle. Now I say, God punish them. <laughs> That's why I love Nigeria. Oh. If they say lunch, hey, hey, hey. If they say lunch, we go lunch with that. <laughs> In Nigeria, lunch, now lunch, oh. Even the lunch, go no see the lunch up. <laughs> when Pan they go, Begiri, they go. From everything roundabout, T-junction, go slow. <laughs> Traffic lights. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at what he said. He said, he is an all-round craftsman. May the Spirit of God rest upon your life. 
I can hear an amen. amen. I say may the spirit of God rest upon your life. Amen. May you know exactly what to do. May you know how to do it. May you know when to do it. In the name of Jesus. Skill is a spirit. Skill is a spirit. Isaiah 11. I will have to skip some so that I can make progress. My time is fast spent. Hmm. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and my and, oh God, my father, the spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of the Lord, verse 3. And shall make him, shall make him. Before then he was not. But when that spirit acted on him, the Bible says he became of quick what? Understanding. That means he became sharp. Bring him to economics. Tell them no. That's the same spirit that was on Joseph. Yes, sir. And Pharaoh, who was, who was a witch. You know Pharaoh was a witch. Pharaoh knew that there was something about this guy. He said, where shall we find such a man in whom is the spirit? The new guy carried something. If you look at the life of Joseph, he was just an ordinary boy physically, but in the realm of the spirit, he was not ordinary. The Bible says his master saw his master saw that anything he did, he prospered in his hand. Something beyond the eyes was working in his life. May it work in your life. Amen. I say, may it work in your life. Amen. May it differentiate you in the market. Amen. May it differentiate you in your home. Amen. May it differentiate you in your family. Amen. May it differentiate you in your business. Amen. May it differentiate you in your office. Amen. Let your amen rise. Amen. Let your amen thunder. Receive it into your life. Receive it into your life. He said, he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. People are saying, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't invest there. But he's seen beyond the eyes. He said, invest there. Everybody is saying the number, the data. He said, that's where to go. He will come and look at it. He said, don't go there. Why? Because he's of quick understanding. Glory be to God. Job chapter 1 verse 10. The realm of the spirit, when they act upon the physical realm, they produce abnormal results. That's what we are talking about. This was the devil speaking here. He said, has thou not made an edge about him? For the devil to know that there was an edge around Job. That means he has tried something before. Yes, sir. I decree a supernatural edge around your life. Amen. Around everything that is named by your name. Amen. Around your assets. Amen. Around your career. Amen. Around your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Around your husband and wife. Amen. Around your children around your home by day and by night look at what he said I don't even think Job knew that there was something about him but guess what when they shoot arrows they fall when they attempt him they fall when they attempt his children because he said has thou not made he was talking to God because the Bible says God is not a man. In another place, the Bible says God is a spirit. And I said, has thou not made an edge about him? A fence about his house. When he says his house, he means his entire family. About all that he had on every side. He now said, you have also put something on the work of his hands. Is somebody still here? He said you have also blessed. So it means somebody can be working and the work of his hand is blessed. 
Somebody can be working and the work of his hand is not what? Bless. Look at the result of that he was working. That's not enough. There was something on the work of his hands. He said, has thou, thou has blessed the work. That means that Satan was somewhere watching, but he could do nothing. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Look at this happening here. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand. And his substance is what? So Satan said, this is not natural. Give it to me in the message. Give it to me in the message. Glory. How many of you know that favor is a spirit? I'm telling you. You might not know it. You might not have the biggest, latest fragrance in life. But when it's upon you, when you activate it, where they are turning everybody back, it will, it's like a hand. It will open hearts for you. They will just say, you go, you go, you go, you. Ah, what is it? Uh, why you stay? And you know what? That's favor. Look at the message. Why? No one ever, this is the devil testifying you concerning Job. He said, No one ever have it, had it so. He said, You pamper him like. <laughs> he said, You make sure nothing bad ever happens to him or his family or. You will not lose your car. <laughs> he said, You bless everything he does. He, eh? What's the last one? You can't lose. I say you cannot lose. I say you cannot lose. I thought someone would shout louder. Therefore, you will not lose your peace. You will not lose your health. You will not lose your mind. You will not lose an organ. You will not lose a body part. You will not lose your life. You will not lose your marriage. You will not lose your job. You will not lose your destiny. Let your amen ring out. My God. Do you know who is acting in your life? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Give it this same verse, NLT. You have always put a wall. So that means there are walls that we cannot see. Aya. Raise your wall. Eh? Are you hearing me? Raise your wall. The Bible says when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Lord shall raise what? A standard. Standard. Raise it over your life, over your mind. Raise it over your children, over your husband, over your wife. Don't let your wife go out without a wall. Don't let your husband go without a wall. Don't let your children go. That's why before the children resume school, we anoint them. We are not just putting oil on them. We are praying. We are, we are spoken words. They will go to school, they will come back. It's not every child that goes to school that comes back. Is somebody still here? Yes, you have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and what? Mm. There won't be fire in your home. Amen. Yes. Your vehicles will not be involved in an accident. Amen. He said you have made him. You have made him prosper. So that means there's something that can. There's an assistant. There's spiritual assistance to prosper. Say, I receive it now. Look at the question. He said, look how. Someone see here. These are demons talking. Oh. He said, look how rich he is. He said, because you assisted him. May God help you. Amen. I pray from the depths of my, may God help you. Amen. The Amplified. 
the amplified you know what the psalm he said he said may the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us prosper the work of our hands have you not put a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side you have conferred prosperity and happiness upon him in the work of his hand and his possessions have increased in the land. My friend, hear me. There is an assistance that comes from the realm of the spirit that makes a man or a woman to increase. I have seen it in my life. I believe it with all of my heart. That is why I look up to him. I say to him, you are my only source. You are my only source. You are, my, you are the one that assists me. You undergird me. I don't disrespect any man. I don't look down my job. I don't murmur against my office. I don't curse my salary. I don't murmur against my salary. But guess what? He's my only source. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 1 Kings 18.46 I thought we were going to be able to go into the second part of this teaching tonight, but this is a good place to tie it up. Listen to me. Uh, we're going to take some time to pray. You will invoke positive things into your life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Listen to me. It works. <laughs> somebody will live here. You will meet somebody your, this, and the story of your life will change forever. Telling you. Ah, the testimonies I've heard this couple of days, they are mind blowing. Someone called me and said, Pastor, this thing is working. He said, Someone just give me a brand new car. Listen to me. There is a life that we call the assisted life. Mm, the divinely assisted life. Spirit can assist you. Your life can be sponsored by favor, sponsored by grace, sponsored by mercy. Ah, when I was praying this afternoon, I, held, I knew that I gave back to something. I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. You can call favor upon your life. You can call favor upon your children. Hear me? And it rests upon you. It's not wasting. It, is, it has rested on you. When it is required, it will manifest. And the hand, or and the spirit of the Lord, was on Elijah, and he gathered up his loins, and he ran. That speed. That speed. Glory be to God. Kabo shele brege de gade ya kapa. Menge bo zole brege de ge balu shele brege de kapa do shele brege de ge de ge de ge de. Have you learned something tonight? Yes, sir. We're going to rise on our feet. We'll just take, take your time. Don't be in a hurry, and don't be lazy in prayer. Make sure your mouth utters something. Most probably don't start with tongues first. Start with English. Invo the biggest prophet on earth over your life is you. Invoke something specific on your business and call it done. Spirits are subject to the name of Jesus. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet.